Good morning to all my friends and family and welcome to this episode of Jim's 5am Club. It's early morning Wednesday and it's going to be a cracker of a day and it's going to also be an awesome sunrise. I love getting up early every morning and one of my loves also is the opportunity to commence a journey with my friends and family and see what we can learn, see what OPE, other people's experiences, we can identify, we can talk about and we can use to help us uh, navigate the day navigate our lives a little bit better and to make better decisions where possible. This morning as we watch the sunrise magically evolve and appear what I'd like to do is go through yet another book summary and today's book summary is entitled What's in it for them? by an author named Joe Polish. Joe Polish. A book that is basically going to help us identify and empathise with the challenges that people face and to um, make us better prepared to be in a position to help them where possible and uh, then to offer some advice in how to uh, lead people um, out of their challenging environments and helping them find peace, tranquility and harmony in their lives. The author here suggests that we all become pain detectives in order to connect with others, to focus first on the other person and their suffering and not to overthink it and to avoid formalities but to be fun and memorable. The author here suggests um, in a way which is quite powerful that people suffer in different ways people suffer physically mentally emotionally and spiritually and suffering is simply a response so in order to be able to help ourselves and to help others what the author suggests is that we need to identify the source of their persistent suffering and to help them see where their challenges lay. So the author then moves on to talk about things that one can do to help others and the key point that he mentions is that we need to look at ways in which we can add value, ways in which we can be useful, uh, ways in which we can help others identify things that they can be grateful for, just like we need to identify things that we need to be grateful for and to help them make a better connection with others um, as well as a better connection with themselves um, because it's a dance we need to continually be working um, and 
honing our skills and making sure that we're attuned to the beauties around us. We need to tune in and be attentive because by caring to identify others' needs, wants and pain points, we can be the bridge, we can be the mirror, we can be the portal that helps them get out and away from the challenges, the temporary challenges that they face. Sometimes people get so involved, get so anxious, get so um, depressed and defensive that they can't see what's causing them their greatest grief. And for that reason, this author says that we need to be the, um, the person who can help them see the obvious, uh, which is not obvious to them, but once you open their eyes, once you turn their head and point them in the right direction, then they get an opportunity to see the sun rising, the clouds changing colour and the world from a different perspective. I remember years ago reading that if people spend too much time in their past, they tend to be depressed. Or if they spend too much time in the future, then they tend to be um, overactive. They tend to be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They tend to be anxious. So, once again, the key message from this author is to make sure that we're spending as much time as possible in the present, in the here, in the now. It's okay to have one foot in the past. It's okay to have one foot in the future. But the majority of your weight, the majority of your balance needs to be in the present moment, in the here and now. Because that's all we really have. The past and the future are just figments of our imagination. And what we tend to do is we tend to overestimate um, and to overthink and to be over harsh on how we interpret the past and the future as well. So what we need to do, according to this author, is to step back where possible and learn to surf life, knowing that there are days where there are going to be big waves, there are going to be multiple sets, there are going to be other days where it's just flat and nothing much happening, and other days where there'll be action happening somewhere else, not where we are at the moment, but somewhere else. And to be part of that action, you may need to get up and go and swim to a different location or drive to a different location in order to be part of that fun and that action. So um, the author once again suggests, and this is my take on the situation as well, is that at the end of the day, we're all going to have a unique and different past. We're going to have a, a series of different experiences in life experiences that we have placed our own interpretation on or experiences where we have interpreted things based on interpretations that we have inherited either from our family, our friends, our partners, our siblings, our uncles, our aunts, grandparents, our teachers, the media, social media, influences, you name it. There's a whole gambit 
of influence out there that can shape our view of the world, that can colour our view, that can shade our view, and that in itself will impact how we experience life, how we see life, and shape our worldview. And our worldview will influence the decisions that we make and how we look at and how we receive and accept other experiences that may come our way. So it's up to us to be as productive and as positive as possible, to live the best version of our lives and not to be trapped, not to be hoodwinked, not to be conned by other people who um, may have a vested interest in us seeing the world or experiencing life in a particular way because there are many people out there who, who love creating fear, uncertainty and doubt and it's their way of maintaining control over a family, over relationships to be able to hold on to their children for longer or hold on to a relationship or add perceived value where there is no value there in the first place. Some people are able to just, you know, tell a story and that story is there to benefit them, not necessarily to benefit each and every one of us. But this author here, to their credit, is in a position to um, let us know that these things are happening, these power games are happening in the background uh, so that we can make, I guess, better decisions and be better equipped to uh, interpret things and to perceive things as objectively as possible because as we're saying if we're taking other people's pictures if we're just looking at the story that other people are saying constantly it may not be our reality once again none of us get to experience life fully we only get to experience slithers of reality based on our experiences, based on where we're facing, based on how we see things, based on how things um, have been experienced before, the stories that we tell us ourselves, the, the heuristics that we employ, the culture that we come from, the religion that we have, all of these things help colour our world and shape our past and all of these things when you add them together compound and create a bigger picture for us to think about and um, the call to action of course is to try and use the best palette possible the best colors possible uh, the best stories possible so that we can have the best life possible because by taking responsibility, by taking action, we are in a better position to influence ourselves, our life, our lifestyle, and that in itself will impact and influence other people as well. It will influence our children, our grandchildren, our friends, our parents, and all the others around us. So we need to be a detective and according to the author, we need to be genuinely curious. Bring your real self to the transactions that you have with people around you. You know, be your real self. There's nothing more important, according to this author, than being your real, authentic, curious self. And to be present and to be real and raw in your opinions um, there's no use 
there's no benefit uh, wearing a mask and trying to be somebody else uh, in your relationships because sooner or later you're going to have to take that mask off sooner or later you're going to drop your guard after you've had a couple of wines or when you're totally relaxed on holidays uh, or you're sick or irritated or challenged sooner or later we're all going to take off our masks and we're all going to be our true self and what's worse there's nothing worse than people all of a sudden realizing that you are not the person they thought you were and it's it's through challenge through uh, um, issues through problems that people show their colors uh, because not everybody can be patient forever and a day now there does come a time where people just get fed up get sick of being um, of being um, I guess a doormat and they, 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 they come forward with their true colors but this is where the author also says is that we need to be patient we need to be generous and we need to be givers uh, and if that's not your natural state if you're doing it just to be nice to people that you don't really feel it and you don't really love being like that then sooner or later you're going to um, as I said before you're going to show your real colors and you're going to feel as if you need something you need some reward in return um, and the world is full of people who, who give only so that they can receive. Now gone are the days where people um, were unconditional in their giving and in their love. What the author's saying here is that people tend these days um, to feel entitled. They feel as if they have a birthright for certain things and they'll only give one unit of love in order to receive 10 units in return. But the author is here is saying is that's not the way to be if you want to help yourself and if you want to help others because feeling entitled also is a burden. It carries with it a prison sentence. It carries with it keys to your prison cell and you yourself will not be happy not be satisfied not be fulfilled and forever and a day you'll uh, feel as if you have to get something you have to get something in return the author then goes on to say another important point that people communicate for two reasons they communicate in order to connect or they communicate in order to escape this is a brilliant perspective that I haven't hadn't quite thought about before but we need to sit and think sometimes if people are out there communicating with us and touching base with us in order to escape the problems that they face the challenges that abound them and as we said before, we need to be detectives and to try and understand a little bit better why people are trying to connect with us. Is it because, or when that, why they communicate with us? Is it that they want to connect? Or is it that they want to escape? The reason why people go on holidays, the reason why people go on cruise ships, is to connect or to escape. I know lots of people in their lifetime who just get up and go, try and escape the challenges, try and escape the problems that they face, a lot of the problems that they have created through their own choices, through their own decisions, not being completely aware of the first, second 
and third level consequences that that freedom, those choices actually bring them. So we need to tell if people uh, are trying to communicate or escape. And you can also tell, and it's important to understand, that not all people are into us. But the good thing is you can tell if somebody is into you or not. It's pretty obvious. So we need to, once again, be realistic uh, and not be, I guess, na naive and gullible, thinking that everybody wants to be our friend, everybody loves us, and every, everybody is there for our, our benefit and um, for our future. A lot of people tag along um, just because they want to escape, just because they've got nothing better to do. They don't have a better option. So once again, something to think about. But in our lives, we need to try and build trust and rapport and comfort. Rapport is basically trust and comfort combined. Trust comes from people who feel comfortable with us but that comfort needs to come over time because the author reminds us here that deep trust only comes with time. We need to be able to show ourselves, we need to be able to show others that we are both reliable and predictable and in our relationships with others we need to demonstrate a clear balance of trust, rapport and comfort. And rapport basically is being able to show that you get along with people, that you're easy going. And once again, uh, we need to be able to decipher uh, the people who are easy going by just acting as if they're easy going, yet in the meantime, they are irritated by what we do. And it's a hard thing, you, you just can't tell sometimes. People pretend to be easy going. People pretend to uh, be getting on with you and, and to be really into you and like you. But all, once again, that's just a game people are playing. And one day you may wake up and find out that it's not real, it's not true. So once again, be a detective to try and figure out if people are genuinely interested in you and get on with you and enjoy your company or if it's just ticking the box and just doing it so that they can escape or just to pass time. I spend a lot of time <clears throat> with people at work where we've got hours together. We spend hours together and we chat about different things. Now it's not always easy to try and figure out if people uh, enjoy those conversations or get on with those conversations or if they're just ticking the box because they've got nothing else to do. The last points that the author needs to make is that the bottom line for relationships and for getting on with people is that you need to make sure that people are comfortable. You know? Eliminate the formalities, eliminate the rules. You don't want people to be around you and to be walking on eggshells. You basically need to, uh, I guess, uh, be somebody who people can just do whatever they want within reason, of course, and feel comfortable. I think that's about it. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club. We've got the Coral Princess coming in today on this beautiful Sydney summer morning. And as you can see, it's making good time. I think it's about to dock up here at half past six. Um, I need to finish off this log, head to the train station, and head to Green Square today. I'm working at a different location, but 
but I'm working with a friend of mine that I haven't worked with for a while so hopefully we'll be able to catch up have a chat chin wag and see where it leads us and hopefully the day will go quickly and not be too onerous on our um, engagement with each other take care wishing you all the very very best and I look forward to coming to you again from a different place a different location uh, where we can use this magnificent city of Sydney as a backdrop where I can overlay my vlogs, my messages of empowerment where we can live, learn and pass it on and also kick off the day with an adventure by seeing things that we don't normally see and by learning something new where possible that we can incorporate, that we can fold into our inventory of skills and use it to better ourselves. Anyway, take care everybody. Yasas from Jim on Jim's 5am club on this most magnificent Wednesday summer day here in Sydney. Yasas and bye for now.